conflicting disputes and disputants. But you must first learn to heal yourself when you heal others. We live in difficult times. We live in times of the social media where work which we do is being constantly assessed. The Supreme Court of India has put all its important hearings on a live streaming platform and we are watched all over the country. But we can also be trolled as a result of that. I'll just give you one example. Just four or five days ago, when I was hearing a case, I had a little pain in the back. So all that I did was I placed my elbows in my armchair in the court and I just shifted my position in the chair. That video was doctored so as to delete that part of what followed thereafter. And there was a big amount of social media comment that the Chief Justice of India is so arrogant that he got up in the midst of an argument, an important argument in the court. What they didn't tell you was that all that he did was only to shift his position in the chair. 24 years of judging can be a little strenuous, as I have put in. But I didn't leave the court, I only shifted my position in the chair. But I was subject to vicious abuse, trolling, the knives were out. But I do believe that our shoulders are broad enough. And the ultimate confidence which we have is of common citizens in the work which we do. But I understand that this is the position of the Chief Justice of India. Judges in Taluka courts don't have the kind of protection which we have. I've heard of stories where in my parent state, the state of Maharashtra, a young judge, civil judge junior division is told by a member of the bar, if you don't behave with me, I'll ensure that the high court transfer you from this station. In other states, when I was Chief Justice of the state of Uttar Pradesh, the High Court of Judicature at Allahabad, there were some stories which I constantly heard every day about the manner in which young judges, middle level judges and senior judges were treated. You belong, you are blessed to belong to a state where these stories are only heard about and not witnessed during your day to day work. But I do understand the difficulties through which you travel when you do your work every day. Although there are points of conversions, most of the problems plaguing the district courts significantly differ from those affecting the high courts and the Supreme Court. In fact, given the plurality of experiences in our country, the issues faced by one district court are often incomparable even with the court in the neighboring district. In such a scenario, it is a methodology that we use to diagnose the problems plaguing our district judiciary, which assumes immense importance. The answer lies in comprehensive data collection and research. A famous American statistician has said, in God we trust, all others must bring data. For a long period, our inability to address the diverse problems affecting the district judiciary arose from the lack of data on the cases, pendency, and infrastructural gaps in the district courts across the country. Today, the National Judicial Data Grid, or NJDG, acts as a comprehensive database, providing real-time data on district courts on an online platform. The NJDG works as a monitoring tool to identify, manage, and reduce the pendency of cases. We have set up the iJuris platform, which gives us a real-time evaluation of the infrastructure in the district judiciary. The Supreme Court, too, has several teams which are working towards institutional reform. The e